In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of God, our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. We continue to be caught up in the wonder of our God. As the days turn dark and foreboding and the wind howls around us, we know that in him we have a place of safety. In him we have a place of protection. So let's continue to place our lives in his hands as we confess our sins and acknowledge our need of God. Lord Jesus, you call your people to turn away from sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You teach us wisdom and write your truth in our inmost heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You forgive sins through the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Let me remind you, brothers and sisters, how hard we used to work, slaving night and day, so as not to be a burden on any one of you, while we were proclaiming God's good news to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, that our treatment of you, since you became believers, has been impeccably right and fair. You can remember how we treated every one of you as a father treats his children, teaching you what is right, encouraging you and appealing to you to live a life worthy of God, who is calling you to share the glory of his kingdom. Another reason why we constantly thank God for you is that as soon as you heard the message that we brought to you as God's message, you accepted it for what it really is, God's message, and not some human thinking, and is still a living power among you who believe it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have searched me and you know me, Lord. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. O where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your face? If I climb the heavens, you are there. If I lie in the grave, you are there. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. If I take the wings of the dawn, and dwell at the sea's furthest end, even there your hand would lead me. Your right hand would hold me fast. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. If I say, let the darkness hide me, and the light around me be night, even darkness is not dark for you, and the night is as clear as the day. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of Christ grows perfect in the love of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, 
Alas for you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs that look handsome on the outside, but inside are full of dead man's bones and every kind of corruption. In the same way you appear to the people on the outside, like good, honest people, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Alas for you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You who build the sepulchres of the prophets and, de and decorate the tombs of the holy ones, saying, We would never have joined in shedding the blood of the prophets had we lived in our father's day. So, your own evidence tells against you. You are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. Very well then, finish off the work of your fathers again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to love this section of the Gospel of, of Matthew. It's the, the fifth and final one of these blocks of, of teaching that we find as Matthew reminds us that Jesus is the fulfillment and the embodiment of, of all of those longings of Israel across the centuries, and especially to be the new Moses, the one who will be the bringer of the true Torah, the instructions, the teachings, the commandments that bring life, that restore us. And so in this section, we have the sixth and seventh of these series of, of seven uh, total. And you know he's completely destroying the, the scribes, the Pharisees, the hypocrites. And of course, the, the truth of, of this is the same right across the centuries. We recognize within our souls that same uh, hip hypocrisy that is, is present there. You know, it's good to look good on the outside, even with a shorn head, to uh, continue to experience that God is calling us to this complete transformation that inside and outside might match, that there would be this integrity of life. We have, uh, we've turned in our first readings to the, the New Testament uh, after uh, 16 weeks of, sorry, 14 weeks of Old Testament readings and just the six weeks of New Testament. We'll now move into a, a group of, of readings from the various letters of St. Paul. We read the story uh, that provides the background to Paul's visit to Thessalonica in Acts 17. So we know that he was there for about a month and during that period, the people did turn to the Lord Jesus. They professed him as their king. They announced him to be the true Lord of their lives. But unfortunately, that created a situation of conflict. And Paul and Silas had to uh, escape for their very lives under armed um, threat. And so this is probably the first of the letters. It's either this or Galatian, uh, the letter to the Galatians, that is the first of the letters that Paul writes around the, the, that same period in the early 50s. And he begins in yesterday and Monday's reading just declaring his, his love and his affection for this church community, longing for them to, to know how much he still esteems them and you know, is still so grateful for the fact that they did support him and that they did turn their hearts to God. And he's, he's talking here about his own tendency to work for himself, you know, not to rely on the support of the church community, but to continue in the trade that, that he had of being a tent maker. And that sense that even though within that society of Greco-Roman culture, you know, manual labor wasn't esteemed, that only the slaves and the, the lesser people did that. But Paul wasn't concerned about that at all. He was totally prepared just to do whatever was necessary, that he would support himself and that he would be capable of being able to, to be a witness to this gift of Jesus that he had received, that he had experienced, that he had, of course, encountered never in the flesh. He'd never actually met Jesus until he encountered him in that vision on the road to Damascus. And so that transformation that is available to all of us, I think it's, it's a wonderful thing to remember that we're no different to Paul in that sense, that we have that same access to Jesus that he had. We have the same access to the Holy Spirit that he had. We have that same power of transformation that this early church community had. Jesus had already uh, died and was raised and had descended to the Father. 
And it's no different to our own possibility of encountering him as we gather to listen to the word, as we gather, hopefully, one day soon, once this period of lockdown, hopefully, especially in the Illawarra, begins to, to be lifted, that we will be able to gather again around the altar of the Lord and be fed and nourished by him. Let's long for that day. Let's really encourage each other until that day comes. Thessalonians, you know, as one of these first letters, there is this strong sense that the second coming is imminent, that that's not far away, that Jesus will return in his glory. By the later letters, Paul realizes that, no, it's, it's not the way that he first thought it to be. There is this long setting in of, of just getting about, doing the work of everyday life, of everyday discipleship. So also for us, let's just continue to do the work of loving one another, allowing God to love us, to forgive us, to transform us and call us into that freedom today. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands to the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen the second Eucharistic prayer for various needs. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, gave you thanks, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The second mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, we drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Look with favour on the oblation of your people, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed unto us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to the table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, with the Apostles and the Martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The earth is replete with the fruits of your work, O Lord, who bring forth bread from the earth and wine to Jesus.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the God of goodness, the God who keeps us safe, protect you and keep you safe and allow you to continue to flourish under his guidance and his love. And may the blessing of the Lord be upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to announce the gospel of the Lord.